your income is your seed. If you cannot grow that seed yeah. to a level where it makes more money for you, yeah. it doesn't make sense. The goal is financial freedom, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, you need to live a little. Yeah. Allow yourself to live. Hey guys, welcome back to Financially Incorrect. I am your host, Barak. Remember, this is where we have a cheeky take on serious financial topics. This podcast is proudly sponsored by FX Pesa. Remember, if you want to learn how to trade, FX Pesa has classes Monday to Friday that are offered in Westlands. They are physical, they are online as well. If you'd also like to open up a trading account, whether it's a demo account to practice or an account to actually trade, FX Pesa is a place to do it. And all the links to be able to access all their resources or to be able to open any of these accounts, a demo account or a trading account, are all is in the description box. Please do check those out. Um, let me just say thank you for everyone who's been watching and supporting our content. Um, let me also continue to give this caveat that um, at Financially Incorrect or at the podcast, we don't um, offer financial advice, um, at least not in a direct form. We have guests who come in and we try and understand their money stories, their money journeys, try and understand how they've made money and how they've invested that money. And through that, we hope that you who's watching or listening are able to pick up a lesson or two, but we do not offer um, strict financial advice. In fact, I think there's only one person who's come onto the podcast, Amos Ngahu, who has identified as a um, financial advisor, financial specialist. Everybody else is just, you know, because money is, you know, money is, 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 What's the word? Like you and I deal with money. I budget, I have expenses, you do as well. And that doesn't make me an expert, doesn't make you an expert. And what we're really trying to do is understand that there's a theory of how one ought to deal with money and everything that we are told about how to deal with money and want to see um, if that's the case on the ground, like in the reality, in everyday um, workings, as people are making money through salaries or businesses, do they actually um, use all of these theoretical methods that we, we hear about? And so anyway, today, um, I have yet another, interestingly enough, I, just, I guess I've given my caveat, <laughs> I have an investment advisor um, who's here with me today. Um, she told me she has five names, although I don't know if I'm able to, if I'm allowed to talk about all the five names, but <laughs> she's the founder of Vasily Capital, an investment firm. Um, I just want to get the exact bio right. Um, an investment consulting firm that consolidates various investment instruments from different companies to provide a 360 degree view of wealth growth journey for investors. And so with me today have Rose Ella Yawera. Welcome to Financially Incorrect. Thank you, Barak. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes. Um, I have five names. Yes. Legally. Yeah. Um, on my ID. Do they fit on your ID? They actually do, do now. Do they? Initially, yeah. they didn't, yeah. so I had to get an affidavit for them to fit. Ah. Yeah, I needed to get a legal document, yeah. and it needed all the names there, because right. they're on my birth certificate, but right. they were not on my ID. Right, so right, right, right. So the first one, and the, yeah, the first one was not on my ID. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Are, you, are, you, are you the eldest child in your family? No, I'm the last born, and oh. the only girl. I think that's why I was given all the English names that ah, I could think about. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. that's interesting, because my brother, my eldest brother mm -hmm. as well, has very many names. I think it's five or, or, or six, potentially. And I, know, I don't think they fit on, on his ID. Sean, if I've gotten that <laughs> wrong... Um, just forgive me, but I don't. I I, I don't think <laughs> don't. all his names. No, I don't think all his names fit on his ID, and yeah. he also had trouble at some point because mm -hmm. because of the sheer number of names he had. Mm -hmm. Um, they just assumed. They at some point they cut off. Like I guess when they were when they were when you do the ID application, at some point they were like, okay, these are enough names, mm. and then decided one mm -hmm. of them was going to be his surname, mm. and it wasn't his surname. And it obviously. wasn't his surname. Yeah, so he had he also had to do like an affidavit mm. for it. Uh, yeah, what, sort it out. I think what they don't tell you legally is yeah. some of the legal documents that you need in life. Yeah. You actually have to have all the names that are on the birth certificate. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm going to get my, my ID, because I got my ID when I was just leaving high school, mm -hmm. so they should have just added all the names that were. Yeah. So I've had to have it added last year. Just last year yeah. is when I had the first name okay. added. I don't know whether I should say it. I mean... They're your names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Legally, I am Andros Ella Nyawera Ngare. Um, yeah. um, I think industry-wise, I am known and, as Rose Ella Nyawera Ngare. Mm -hmm. And I am also identifying to my friends as Nyawera Ngare. 
So I am just reducing the names as they go along. Right, right. And so that I can be able to identify right. all the other parts of my life as yeah. well. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, we've been celebrating, um, I guess, at Financial Inquiry, we've done like an International Women's Month for the month of March. So oh, yeah. you're the last, because um, so month so for March, we've only had women guests. Oh, yeah. um, so you're the last one for this month, because this, yeah. this episode is going to air on the last day of of March, okay. and the theme for it, the International Women's Day this year was inspire inclusion. Yes. What do you think about that? Um, I would look at it from the industry that I'm in mm-hmm. when it comes especially to investments and finances, mm-hmm. and I think it's um, from where I sit and from the industry that I'm in actually when as a woman who is in, an, in a male-dominated industry, mm-hmm. I think it's good that we actually include ourselves when it comes to financial uh, matters. Right. I mean, um, before you invest, Barack, um, yeah. and you're married, before you invest, the first thing that you usually say is, let me ask my wife, right? right? Hopefully. You yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't hear this. Because, no, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do yeah. It is normally, yeah. let me ask my wife. Yeah. That is how women are actually included. We are actually the people who plan our men's money. Um, most of the time, but we yeah. don't know it, yeah? Mm. We, we never know it. And mm. mostly because men um, are risk takers, mm-hmm. and as women are more nurturing and we have more, more of a long-term yeah. outlook when it comes to life and all that, so you're able to judge the investment. Yeah. Um, so the moment you, as a woman, you actually include yourself in that journey when it comes to your finances and put it in your head that you need to be included, yeah? Mm-hmm. You need to be there. You need to learn also how to manage your money mm-hmm. as a woman and also manage other people's money, yeah? mm-hmm. you're able to, and you're able to teach yourself and teach others. Mm-hmm. The beauty about we women is, as nurturing as I am and as a mother as I am, I will learn, and then I will introduce Shiko, and I will introduce Jane, and I will introduce someone else yeah. in my journey, and they will introduce others. So it becomes a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You know, I think in my, in my thing, in my in my specific case, I think. I think I'm more risk averse than my wife is. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think she's. I mean, she's more of a risk taker. I, I would say I think so. Like but as, you still I, as, ask as I think her. about it, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> um, but I think about it now. Mm-hmm. I think, um, yeah, I, I think I think I'm definitely more um, risk averse. Risk averse than than she is. I I think that would be my assumption. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So so um, I mean, do you do? Are, are you? Is that a, is that a theme that you're looking to? Um, I guess push push through for the rest of this year. I know that you you've said that. I mean, they did it by recording this. You've talked about going to to do a training for fifty women yes. um, on financial matters. I know that on the twenty third of this month there is an event. What women want, which is done by Pinky Galani, which FX Vesa are sponsoring, and yes. you're speaking at that panel as well. Yes. Um, is that sort of your way of also trying to, I guess, inspire inclusion? Yes, yeah. inspire inclusion, and also um, as a company we have a. Um, I would call it um, a policy uh-huh. that we focus on women and youth mostly. Mm-hmm. And right now we are having a campaign called Empower, Peace and Freedom. Um, and enough. Okay. The first thing is um, empower. How empowered are you as a woman? Yeah. Um, so that you can be able to take um, your financial journey and to make financial decisions. Yeah. And have you had enough of your situation? Yeah. Yeah. Have you had enough of living debt, uh, in debt? Have you had enough of not having enough money? Have you had enough of not having insurance? Yeah. And what are you doing about it? If you have had enough, what is enough wealth for you as a woman? Yeah. The other thing that we have is peace. What does that peace look for you when you have enough wealth? Yeah. And then freedom. What does it represent for you? Yeah. Yes, as a woman. Okay. Yes. I have a question for you on that. And this I'm actually picking, or not, almost, not directly, but I'm picking almost literally from some of the comments that... Um, 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 I've been made aware of on mm-hmm. on 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 Twitter, mm-hmm. um, and there was I guess the week that we're shooting this, there, mm-hmm. just a couple of days before, there was a stuff that was really trending around um, financial content in mm-hmm. in the Kenyan um, content landscape right mm-hmm. now, right? And the person who made a comment and said, you know, I I do not want to hear mm-hmm. about another money market um, uh, investment plan. Like, if you're not telling me how I'm going to make that money, mm-hmm. then, you know, just forget it. And I'm asking that based on the comment that you made around 
have are you tired or not of not having enough money mm-hmm. so what do you tell people who i guess are tired of not having enough money and and if you were to um i know i'm putting you in the spot but if you were to directly respond to this person who um tweeted and talked about well i don't know if it, it's called x now anyway it's but this x. person is x now <laughs> anyway the person who sent the tweet who mm-hmm. sent the, the tweet and essentially said um yeah I'm, I'm tired of hearing all of these financial plans if you're not telling me how to make more money mm-hmm. then forget about it i mean the question is what do you have yeah as a person, yes, I'm directing to that person. Yeah. Um, if I'm not telling, yes, I'm not telling you how not to make how to make more money. Yeah. I'm asking you, what do you have so that we can work with it, so that yeah. you can make more money with it? Because your income is your seed. If you cannot grow that seed yeah. to a level where it makes more money for you, yeah. it doesn't make sense. So what what are you coming with? Yeah. Um, as an investment advisor, anytime a client comes to me mm-hmm. and they tell me um, I want to make more money and I always ask them, is that the goal? Fine. If the, if the goal is to make more money, what is enough money for you? I mean, if I give you, um, if you have 5,000 and, and you, I give you 10,000, mm-hmm. is that enough? You know, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the question. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what are you coming with so that I can be able to guide you? Mm-hmm. But if you're coming with an empty mind and an empty hand, mm-hmm. I'm also not able to feed to it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because you can only feed so then to how yourself. Do you, so then the how, journey, do you, how, how do you help me? The journey is very personal, Barack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you do not take it upon yourself to actually walk that journey, mm-hmm. I cannot help you as an investment advisor. And that is what people never understand. Mm-hmm. If you go to a wealth manager and tell them, um, I mean, I have, let's say I have five million lying in the bank, but um, I don't want to touch it, but mm-hmm. I want to invest it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does not make sense to the wealth manager because they'll ask you, so how do, we want to, well, how do you want us to invest that 5, 000, mm-hmm. 5 million, mm-hmm. yet you don't want to draw it from your bank account. Mm-hmm. You just want to see it and smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah? If you don't risk it, you're not going to make money out of mm-hmm. it. So you have to put yourself out there as a person and decide um, as much as this is, I have the 5 million, mm-hmm. I need to make this journey more personal and also own the journey and walk the journey. Mm-hmm. I cannot, if you gave that money to someone, maybe you say, I'm giving that five million to someone, two, three years later, you'd mm-hmm. want accountability or even mm-hmm. three months, you'd want accountability. Right. I mean, how is money, my money doing? Right. But if you don't do it and you say you have given that five million, it's like burying that money in the mattress. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What happens then? I want to play devil's advocate on both sides, mm-hmm. um, um, on the client side and the advisor side, right? Mm-hmm. So for the, for the client side, I want to ask if I'm coming as a client, do you think mm-hmm. that, um, and this is your general opinion, right? Mm-hmm. I'm asking your general opinion. Do you think that financial advisors are catering and providing enough, whether it's information or resources around um, people being able to to raise the capital, like people being able to actually make the money to be able to invest, and and I'm really trying to just, um, um, I guess, hit the nail on on the head with regard to that tweet that was sent, mm-hmm. um, where like, are you not? Do you, do you feel like you guys are doing enough of a of a of a of a job, so to speak, to talk to people about how to make more money so that they can have this five million to invest? Because if you don't even have that five million to invest, then you know it's a non-starter. Then, sorry, mm-hmm. on the second side, I feel like I'm being crucified on behalf. You feel a bit <laughs> possibly, but and I yes. said possibly. <laughs> then, on the second side, I want to ask mm-hmm. um, now on the as as a, as a, as, a, as an investment advisor, do you feel like people want a shortcut to be able to make money? And by a shortcut, I mean. Um, like, do people just want to be told that this is how to make money? Like, do they want an easy way out and, and are almost, quote, unquote, refusing to accept that it's actually difficult? You know, there's a book called um, The Road Less Traveled, and I think the first, like, I think on the first page or something, it says, life is hard, and mm-hmm. it's supposed to be hard. And once yeah. you accept that, it changes your way that you'll approach life. But anyway, my, my point is, do you think that there's a, part, there's a percentage of the public that is just looking for an easy way out to be able to make lots of money? Can I say the question, the second question has answered the first question. The thing is, yeah. Yeah. We, 
we as a society, yes, we have been raised, we have a microwave kind of society. We just want to, yes, we want a shortcut. Um, We want to grow this we want to grow to five million without mm-hmm. thinking that there are steps that need to be mm-hmm. taken. Um, we want the five million to grow to 50 million without, um, yes, with taking risk, mm-hmm. of course, but without thinking about the risk itself, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. So we don't understand the risk tolerance, we don't as- understand the risk appetite, that, or rather the kind of risk that you're taking, mm-hmm. yeah? So your five million years can grow to 50 million, but in what period of time? Right. And what risk do you have to take? We right. never think about that. Right. We never think that we can actually go from five million to negative, yeah? Yeah. 10 million yeah. in seconds, yeah. in days, yeah. yeah? So unfortunately, unfortunately, um, as a society, and I think I have been part of it, um, I'm not going to speak as an investment advisor. I am mm-hmm. going to speak as a person who has mm-hmm. wanted to get money quick as well. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we also look at the investment solutions that are there and we are like, it's going to take so much time mm-hmm. for me to grow from my 50,000 on a month to month basis to Five million, mm-hmm. yeah. It is going to take so much time, and yes, it's supposed to take so much time, mm-hmm. unless you're increasing your income. Yeah. So how do you increase your income if you're not earning it? Um, maybe from your employment. Perhaps you look at ways of um, getting into a hobby that can make you money. Right. Shoot a podcast like Barack. <laughs> you know, um, do YouTube channels, and uh, you have yeah, yeah, you have passive income coming through. Yeah. Do TikToks. I hear TikTok. TikTok is paying hundred dollars per in the video? revenue program. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how much that. I I I I I know. I read an article that said that mm-hmm. the lady who did the why, who did I get married to CDs. I think mm-hmm. within the first forty eight within like a week or something, she made like three hundred thousand dollars. But I yeah. I don't know how much their I don't know what their their cost per mile is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. See, there are ways of increasing your income yeah. just like that. But I think we have to actually go back to the, the question of internalize the question of this is my money journey yeah. as a person. Yeah. And I really need to understand my basics, yeah. my budgeting. I know you have talked about it, my budgeting, my expenses and all that. Yeah. And then see if I have any residual income that I can put into investments. Yeah. If I have any residual income that I can put into investments, what are these investments that suit my life goals, that I align to my appetite, to my risk right. appetite and my risk profile? Right. Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. I have, I have a very um, sort of obscure question to, to ask you. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite money-themed movie? Oof. And why? Damn. Have I watched a money themed movie? I think the Wolf mean? of the, the Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street? Wall Street. Yes. Really? Why? When I was watching it, yeah. I was starting the company Vasili, and uh-huh. I was I really knew what we wanted to be. And was it, was, it, <laughs> was it Jordan? Did you want to be like Jordan? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to make those sales. Yeah. You know, ring a bell and say we have closed us. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That was four years ago. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I think I mean I think Wolf of Wall Street also for me like um yeah um um I guess it's quite up there. I I think I think those guys just um especially in the way that they portrayed it in the movie. I think they just lived large. I think there was this um scene because I saw this on Twitter. I think mm-hmm. uh, last week, mm-hmm. someone was 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 um had put the clip where. Jordan's dad, where Jordan is with his, I guess, his partners, and his mm-hmm. dad is walking in, mm-hmm. complaining about um, their expenses, yeah. you know, and saying that they're, t- you know, blowing twenty, thirty thousand on dinners and entertainment mm. and all those things. Mm. And I think just, yeah, it just, it's like those guys were really living large. So I think that's what I found alluring, yeah, about about Wolf of yeah. Wall Street. Anyway, okay. The funny thing yeah. is, like, because um, I've been in investment sales for a while. Yeah. The moment you get those commissions, sometimes you feel like you want to blow them up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's it's in the industry. What's yeah? the largest commission you've got? Uh, I think 700 in a month. Yeah. 
Yeah, some time back. That was in 2018. Mm -hmm. 2017. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm, in a month, and that was, and then it kept rolling over every month, so you're getting that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. For a couple of months. Okay. And I blew it. Oh, all the money? You know that episode of I Blew It in South Africa? They have some series of I Blew. The, yes. the, one, the one about people who've won the, the lottery and, and... Yes. Yeah. Oh, how come? I would assume that, you know, being a, an investment uh, manager, you'd be a bit more savvy. We are savvy. wiser now. We were young and stupid. Now we are wiser. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. What did, you, what did you grow up thinking about uh, money? Well, what, was your, what was the money mindset that you, I guess, had um, um, or, or that, that was instilled in you by um, your upbringing? We didn't have money. Yeah. So we didn't, I didn't know anything about money, really. <laughs> Um, what do you, sorry, up, sorry, what do you mean by we didn't have money? Are you able to qualify that a little bit more? Yeah, like yeah. Um, my parents were civil servants. Okay. Civil servants back then no, didn't have money. Mm -hmm. I mean, we lived, we are three of us, mm -hmm. we were in boarding school, so we lived, um, I, all I saw is my mother living loan to loan. Okay. Yeah, because you have to go to school, you have to be paid for school fees and mm -hmm. all that. But we had a nice house, we had a decent house, we had a nice farm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't know anything about money, mm -hmm. like in terms of investments and all that mm -hmm. when I grew up, cause we were also not talked to about money mm -hmm. when we were growing up. Um, I think just recently is when I realized Allah, my mother was rich, you mm -hmm. know, she rich in terms of, if you see the dividends that she gets from her circle, mm -hmm. Like she used to invest all this much, mm -hmm. and she gets um, all these dividends at the end of the month, mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Um, but she lived; she also lived kind of loan to loan, mm -hmm. so that she can be able to sustain mm -hmm. our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so growing up, um, and I remember also kind of struggling with school fees and all that mm -hmm. when I went to campus. Mm -hmm. So growing up, um, when I got my first paycheck. Um, the first thing that I did is actually budget because the fact that I didn't have money and also I've gotten a paycheck and I don't have a, enough money to sustain my expenses, mm -hmm. the first thing I did is I used to maintain a kabuk. I saw it some time back and I was like, guy, unga was sijui how much bob, sijui 76 bob. Mm -hmm. And so unga, ugali, diapers for baby. Diapers were expensive back then. I had mm -hmm. a baby. Mm -hmm. Yes, diapers were expensive back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I remember just writing everything down. Um, and I think that kind of changed my money story mm -hmm. a bit. Because now you're earning, you have to actually manage your money. You have to pay rent, you have to pay a house guard, you have to sustain a man. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is this at that particular point in time, or is yeah when I started or is, earning, or is sustaining a man like a when I started earning? Uh, sad story, bro. <laughs> ah, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, and unfortunately, as well as you go along, because now you're thinking the the only way I knew money is borrowing, mm -hmm. so I started getting into debt as well. So, what is mm. the quickest way I can be able to borrow from my bank? Mm -hmm. Then there were no mobile loans and mm -hmm. all that. So what is the quick, quickest way I can borrow from a bank? How much can I pay? So borrow from a bank, perhaps. Um, I, I made the first investment in a business and I made a huge loss, but I kept paying for the loan. Okay. So yeah. Then I think after that, I stopped completely just taking loans. Okay. And just what led to you thing. stop? What led to you wanting to stop taking loans? Because... Um, I didn't know what to do with it. Okay, I am borrowing because I want more money. Okay. You get? Yeah. Because I have this illusion of the money in the bank. You feel like you're rich when you have money in the bank. Okay. But you're paying for it. Um, I read So you just wanted to have yeah, you just, money. You just wanted just to see it. money in your just account. Just see it. Yeah. After making the loss, the business loss, yeah. I just wanted to see money in the bank. And when you're talking about a business loss, how much money have you, how much money had you lost? Yeah. Because uh, I borrowed like 50k, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was paying then I was earning 10k. So okay. when you borrow 50k, it's, it's five, a times, lot. five times your salary. Yes. Yeah, um, so you can imagine, mm -hmm. um, when you have invested all that in a business, yeah, mm -hmm. CDs, that then you could buy movies, those five, the five in ones, yes, okay, yes, and then. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're well and truly in the piracy game. <laughs> I, was. That, I mean, I think that I, 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 I mean, I, we, I bought, we bought those. We bought exactly. Those yeah, yeah, exactly. Bought, I yeah, was. Yeah. And then, um, because I was working full time, mm-hmm. my then boyfriend was the one who was managing. I feel ashamed saying this. Managing the business. Managing the business. And you guys and had, a, had, had a child together at this point. Yes. Okay. And uh, we blew it. Or rather, he blew it. So I kept paying the loan. After mm-hmm. the business has gone under, yeah, yeah, for a period of time, yeah. then after that, um, I got a salary raise. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. Eh. so I started. My first salary was ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Then I got a salary raise of fifteen thousand. What year so is happy. this? Twenty ten. Twenty ten. Okay, I'm just, I'm just asking so yes. um, to give context for yes. I guess the viewers so they understand. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah. Twenty ten. Okay. Um, and actually, that was my first job in an investment company because okay. I'd studied law. Um. So I was continuing on with my law degree. Okay. Um, then I got into an investment company. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I was a receptionist. Mm-hmm. So and then I got into when I got a salary raise, I became an investment a, a customer service okay. officer. Okay. I was happy. Okay. Uh, Fifteen thousand. It yeah. pesa mingi. Yeah. But then this is Nairobi. You're living in Nairobi with fifteen thousand. Yeah. yeah. So you you wake up at. Five so that you can catch a mat by five thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you bob kukuja tau. Okay. And then you leave the office um, at seven thirty so that you pay another seven thirty. Seven thirty p.m. P.m. Okay. Well, off peak. Basically, you get the off peak. Yes. Yeah. And okay. your employer thinks you're the employer of the man. <laughs> Basically, okay. you you're just managing your yeah expenses. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But I mean, do. Did your bosses then think like you must be a really really hard worker then? Like, they you thought. You must be committed to. They thought to I was. Firm. Yeah. <laughs> they that, thought I was. <laughs> did that lead to a need to, to a to a bigger raise? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So from that, especially the beauty is um, when you when they see that you're committed, they give you more. T- <laughs> you're rewarded with more work. Yeah. <laughs> that is the beauty of being com- in a in a corporate world. You're yeah. rewarded with more work, and then um, after a period of time, I also got a raise um, and also got a job title raise. Okay. Um, then I think after in twenty by twenty thirteen, I was head of customer service for that company, mm-hmm. and then I was poached mm-hmm. to another company. Mm-hmm. Now the other company gave me money that I had never seen mm-hmm. in my bank account. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. How much is this money that you had hey, never seen? Hey, hey. Yeah, you're coming from forty. You're paid one fifty, mm. and you're like, Allah, mm. Mm. this life is nice, you mm. know. Um, so of course your, of course your status change. Okay. Um, you want to live in a better place. Okay. You want to uh, buy furniture, more expensive furniture, and all that. Then after another six months, I was poached by another company. Mm-hmm. Um, Must have been very good at your job. I was. Yeah. I was very diligent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and I thank God for my first company, that ten thousand company, okay. because it was a really good training ground um, of what who I am right now. Okay. Actually, yeah. When it comes to uh, what I do with my career mm-hmm. and how I even chose from being a from being a lawyer right. to being in the investment right. world. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, poached. So you poached again. Yeah. Poached again yeah. after six months. Um, also given a nice raise. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything Is was it double, looking, triple, quadruple. This one was it was not much from the one fifty. It okay. was just an increment, okay. but with better um, better benefits. Okay. Yeah, basically, and then it was more of a perspective. It was more of a challenge to me, okay. a growth so challenge growth, to me. Right, right. Yeah. So it was more exciting okay. at that moment. Um, so yeah. Okay. Before you go on a bit mm-hmm. further, I wanna ask, how is your budgeting, your personal budget changing from the ten k to the forty k to the one fifty k to the now mm-hmm. a bit of a fifty k? Like what's happening? I know you've talked about um, wanting to buy better furniture and in, you know moving houses. Um, are there any other fundamental changes in the way that you're Everything spending your money? Changes. Uh-huh. The problem with us as people is. Mm-hmm. Everything changes, mm-hmm. yeah. The moment you get money, mm-hmm. the first the first month, actually, the moment you sign that contract and you know I'm going to get this, mm-hmm. you've already started looking for houses. You yes, um, better schools for my son, mm-hmm. um, uh, maybe another house help, perhaps mm-hmm. paying more. Mm-hmm. You know, everything just changes. And I even thought I should buy a car. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a car that time mm-hmm. was very fundamental to my business mm-hmm. because I used to not stay in the office. Mm-hmm. Actually, we I used to be I used to be told I'm part of the furniture. So I never mm-hmm. had an office desk because mm-hmm. I used to move around a lot talking to clients mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and moving from one office to another because I was in charge of training and development for the distribution team. Right. Um, so the problem I did is mm-hmm. with that, I think that was one of the biggest money mistakes I've ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, I took a car loan with a company, yeah? Okay. So see, the company has negotiated a rate with the bank. Right. So the of course the rate is lower. Right. So I took a car loan and I paid part of the deposit mm-hmm. and then the company now with the employment every month you're being deducted a certain amount. Right. Now unfortunately or fortunately I am a big dreamer. Mm-hmm. 5 years uh, when I was hired in this the that company now mm-hmm. which was the last employable company that I was in. Okay. Um, when I was hired, I was asked, where do you want to be in five years' time? And I said, I want to have big dreams. Mm-hmm. I want to have my own company and I have want to. Five years, mm-hmm. yes, I actually had my own company. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, and I took the car loan on the fourth year and then I quit. A mm. few months into it, mm. my dream called me. So okay. I quit. Um, unfortunately, mm-hmm. when I quit, um, of course, yes, the loan goes back to the market rate. Right. And then COVID hits. Oh, wow. So you don't have, you've quit. Yeah. Uh, you don't have income whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and then you have to pay this monthly loan. On, yeah. Yeah. Every, every month you have to pay a certain amount. And okay. You, yeah. And you have a startup. <laughs> Okay, before, before I, cause I have questions on that, but before that, I want to tie this back to, because you had said mm-hmm. that you had, um, you had sort of forgone the loan mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you were now taking this car loan, was that a challenge for you to get back into saying, okay, I'm taking another loan. Um, I, I had said I don't want to do loans anymore. Was that a bit of a challenge or? It, it was, mm-hmm. but also it was kind of um, trying to keep up with the Jones kind of mentality okay. for me. Okay. Yeah. Because all your peers at that We're moment, driving, yeah, right? they're driving and yeah. they're bought cars and you're like, ah, why not? Right. Yeah. I actually okay. got my driving license when the car had arrived. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Mm. Um, I guess I've understood sort of your going over the the, 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 the mentality of not wanting to take loans and you know, yeah. take ones and you get a car. Mm. Um, so now you said you... COVID has hit, you've quit, you have a loan to repay back at market rate. Yes. And you've quit to start your business. So at this point in time, there's no income that's there's coming no in. There's no income whatsoever. So what, how, how, are you, how are you surviving at this point? I took my, I took my pension because <laughs> you, you're allowed to take 50% of your contribution. Then it was, I think, 50, no, 100% of your contribution mm-hmm. and then 50% of the employer's contribution. Okay. Um, so I took that, mm-hmm. and that is what I was using to survive. Right. And then I think uh, 2020, I started a business with the car just to try and maintain. Okay. Yeah, so that I can just move around as well. And that was during COVID. That was at the height of COVID. Mm-hmm. And as well so that I can try and maintain the monthly payments. Okay. How much um, were the monthly payments? Uh, I was paying 25. Okay. It wasn't a lot. Mm-hmm. But when you don't have income and you have yes, all the other expenses, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, and it's, it's a, Yeah. So I think that, that that was one of the biggest, that's why I say it's one of the biggest money mistakes I've ever made. What taking, was the mistake? Taking, it wasn't, the mistake was taking the car loan mm-hmm. without thinking it through and without thinking about the risk tolerance that I had. You see, the thing is, mm-hmm. Um, if, if I had stuck with the employer, mm-hmm. um, the the monthly payments would still go on. Mm-hmm. But now because um, I wanted out, I mm-hmm. wanted to go out and chase my dream, mm-hmm. I do not regret it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But I should have d- sat down and thought about the re- monthly repayments mm-hmm. when it comes to loans. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question was for me, was it worth having this car mm-hmm. for this long, right. do I need to keep it? Right. And end of 2020, beginning of 2021, I put it into market. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, I'm done. Because 
we are we are working mostly in the house mm-hmm. um if it's movement i can take an uber mm-hmm. um yeah i mean it's if it's mobility everything is sorted yeah yeah so i i really don't need it yeah. at this moment so i just put it into market and paid off the loan that was remaining yeah okay yeah so so the ex, from what i've understood the excitement of uh, and i'm looking at justin here mm-hmm. the excitement mm-hmm. of um going to follow your dream mm-hmm. um uh, sort of took out the logic of the the, the 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 whether you would be able to comfortably pay back exactly. um the 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 car loan repayments mm, month, monthly exactly. payments exactly okay yeah interesting okay so i hadn't i hadn't yeah. like you know we 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 jump with you have you're so excited your about heart, something yeah. but you have yeah. not thought the way through all yeah. the way through how yeah. sorry how often do you see that in your line of work oh a lot yeah a lot. Um, Do you have confidentially ag- ag- agreements you sign yes, with your lawyers? Oh, with, okay. We have <laughs> with your clients. Sorry, I'm yes, going to ask do. you for um, yeah a story or two. Yeah. 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 We do, but sometimes you meet people and you're like, this this financial plan does not make sense at all mm-hmm. for you. I mean, mm-hmm. and I think it's things that we go. Sometimes you go through and um, you look at a plan for someone. They have bought a house or they have built themselves a really nice house. Mm-hmm. I know on on home ownership is one of the things that we actually aspire to have. Right. But then um I keep thinking about it this way. So I have a home I have built. Mm-hmm. I probably have taken a loan f- to build it. Mm-hmm. Um I bought the plot when I was employed. Uh took a loan from my circle, built the house. Maintaining that house might probably cost about 70,000. So mm-hmm. perhaps you have a gardener, you have you know security, you have all these things to pay. And I was paying rent of thirty five thousand. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is easier? You know, those are questions that you keep asking mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently, I met a, a young client, and we we're going all through through all that. He wrote down everything that he has, and I was like, "Oof, okay." We need to kind of go back to the mm-hmm. drawing board, mm-hmm. yeah, because some things don't make sense. Yeah, and um, the goal is financial freedom, mm-hmm. but at the same time. Um, you need to live a little yeah. allow yourself to live so if the situation right now is constraining you yeah you need to kind of pull yourself back and ask yourself where did i go wrong in my journey so that i can be able kind of you're paying it forward yeah where did i go wrong in my journey at the moment so that yeah. i can be able to live financially free in yeah. the future because yeah. if you look at someone who is in their that is and they are in a uh, debt of millions yeah and it will take them years to pay years yeah. to pay yeah. and what they have acquired probably a dead asset so you buy a pl- you buy a plot here you buy a plot here because your friends are telling you right. to do so right. i mean it does not make sense right. so you need to actually pull yourself back and ask yourself what do i want at the moment what are my short term goals my medium term goals mm. and my long term goals how can i be able to achieve them within the shortest time possible and how do they align with my financial situation at the right. moment yeah okay if we were to use your experience mm. um, um, in your work as a sample size mm-hmm. what percentage of, of of kenyan kenyans do you think are financially um, literate Hey, that is a <laughs> that is a nice question yeah. because I would say financial if if they know about money yeah let's say hundred percent know about money yeah but in terms of financial literacy yeah I would say about ten percent you'd say so one in one in ten people one in ten people yeah. know what they are talking about yeah yes. The reason I'm asking this is because I came across this um it was an article I came across. Mm-hmm from the World Economic Forum, and they were talking about Denmark and how it's mandatory for teens to take part in oh, you saw that. Financial, uh, yes. yeah, financial literacy um, mm. um, classes. And I'm, I'm going to read a, um, just a section of it, and it says, um, mm. not only are the Danes the happiest, they're also some of the most financial literate in the world, and it's because of the education system and the place that they start teaching them about money and how to deal with it when they're still in school. Placing an emphasis on budgeting, saving, and planning efficiently 
puts their financially lit- financial literacy rate at mm. a whooping 71%. Mm. Every year, 20,000 students at 700 schools participate in the Danish Money Week, where financial professionals teach classes. Becoming financial literate is crucial. Anyway, yeah. Mm. So I guess when I read that, I was also like, oh my goodness. Um, it's the same way, I guess for us, I think what I've heard many people talk about is the fact that nobody talks to you about, you know, taxes and KRA and all those things, yet these are things that are going to become... I guess once you become an adult and you get your pain and your ID, these are things that you need to take care of on a daily basis. So I guess for me, I was just looking at it as, um, yeah, like I guess from where you sit, mm. I guess because you're saying you're one in 10 people are financially literate. So I almost want to ask, and it's almost going to sound cliche, but mm-hmm. um, what, when, what, what age or at what stage do you think financial literacy should be introduced from a young age. Yeah. From school, from what as Denmark is as this, doing. Yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, if I learned about money when I was growing up, yeah. and, I, I, and I, I usually think that most of our um, journeys when it comes to, f- most of our f- life journeys actually, yeah. Yeah. whether it's money, whether it's relationships and all that, yeah. it is all about how we grew up. Yeah. Yeah, how you grew up... Um, uh, seeing how your parents are treating people and yeah. all that, that is how you're going to treat people. Yeah. Perhaps or better. Yeah. So if I learned about money from a young age, mm-hmm. I probably would be much, I would be much further in life than mm-hmm. I am right now. I wouldn't, I would probably not make the mistakes I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you know from yeah. a young age. And it's actually, you can actually see it from people who have grown up with uh, parents who are bankers or investment advisors and mm-hmm. all that, because mm-hmm. I've engaged one of them and his outlook is so different. Right. You know, he's, he's one of the, you know, those families in Kenya that you know have it. Yeah. But um, he does not need to show off with big cars. Yeah. Yeah. He commands a presence when he walks into a room, yeah. but he does not need to show off with big cars and all that mm. because he learned about how to manage his money right. from a young age. Right. And I think that is how we should actually, from, hey, I think in Kenyan system, I think from the age of seven, yeah. or yeah, let them learn, okay, when you do a, a, a task, I'll pay you. Mm. Then when, you, when I pay you, uh, say something that you perhaps give a goal, what you want to purchase at the right. end of the year, right. and then I'm going to purchase it for you. Right. And it's, I think it's changing, Barack, because um, having a teenager now, I'm seeing his way of relating with money is way different from how I related with mine. Mm-hmm. Um, he will get um, money from his uncles and he will come and tell me, put it in my money market fund account. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently he told me... Um, Money market is giving 10%, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And I can see dollar has appreciated. That was in December. Mm-hmm. I was, then Wait, he was yeah. asking me how, what is happening with the dollar mm-hmm. and all that. I was very interested. Yeah. But I think for that one time, I knew I had some, done something right, right. <laughs> in my <laughs> right, life. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then um, we opened an offshore account for him. And that's where he's been depositing the money. Okay, of, of course, through my help. Right. But that's where he's been depositing his Right. Yeah, his pocket money. Okay. Mm. In dollar, in dollar. In dollar. Now we have to, right. now I have to know which yeah. um, which bureau in town is giving the best rate. The best rate. dollar rate. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I have a question because I think even mm. in your explanation of, of all those things and, and making right financial decisions, mm-hmm. I believe that's still, uh, it's still in a vacuum, right? Yeah. Um, I want to ask about, because money, um, we use money for different things. And I'm mm-hmm. going to lead this based on the two experiences you told me about, mm-hmm. um, um, I guess, poor money decisions or interesting money stories that mm-hmm. you told me. And so you talked about one, about going out on a, having a night out with girls mm-hmm. um, who were your friends mm-hmm. and spending about 40,000 Kenya shillings. On girls. Um, yeah, on, on your friends. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, and I asked you, um, or oh, was it for, and you said it was for, Friendship. You yeah. were trying to buy friendship, right? Mm-hmm. With the 40,000, um, with, with, I guess, buying them um, drinks and making them feel good. And so I want to not look at money in a vacuum and the use of money and bad money decisions in a vacuum, but then saying at this particular point in time, like you are pursuing, um, I guess you're hoping to get, I don't know whether it was friends um, or a friendship or a good relationship. So I want to sort of correlate. Um, 
the 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 poor you know use of money mm -hmm. but for the pursuit of what would otherwise be a noble thing it's just that it went it, it went it south. Went south yeah yeah so i mean i guess what are your what is your what are, what are your thoughts or what's your response to that because even if you're making a bad money decision it's not just oh yeah i'm going to go and spend money badly mm -hmm. right yeah actually i think beginning of that day i hadn't planned on spending a dime yeah but then um yeah i ended up spending that much yeah and the next day i was like what did i do last night you mm. know um and then you expect you kind of expect that you're going to there's payback you know people right. are going to call you for drinks and you will feel like you have earned it back right. but it doesn't come yeah um so i think the one thing that i did at that moment and i was very liquid that's why i was, I was mm. saying the commissions that i was getting i yeah. blew them yeah? yeah i was very liquid um and that that period of time after mm. i met someone who told me always put your money in a project and he told me if you do not give money a name mm -hmm. it always finds one mm -hmm. um and i think that's the best remember i knew how to budget yes yeah before I mean, you, were, you were in the yes you know, but now because i am in liquidity yeah. Yeah. i have decided <laughs> let me blow it and yes i am still budgeting for the but i'm still keeping a, a very big chunk of money in liquid in in the bank yeah. so when you have you just swipe your card and all that mm -hmm. and because you're swiping it you don't want to see it so you don't feel the pinch <laughs> yeah. Yeah? yeah you don't feel the pinch that you're spending it yeah so um the moment i learned now that that putting money giving each coin a name mm -hmm. i said using a different way of budgeting for mm -hmm. me it's it's the zero budget mm -hmm. I don't have even a shilling mm -hmm. that does not know that does 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 that not know its right, name. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like I don't have money that is lying in the bank just lying. Mm -hmm. It has to have a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It is for this purpose. Mm -hmm. So I think that really works out for me mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. because it gives me a focus of this is where the money is going mm -hmm. and if you ask me for money right now barack i'll tell you by the way sina because it's already mm -hmm. been accounted mm -hmm. for somewhere mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. um so if you operate in a vacuum mm -hmm. the way you're saying yeah um unfortunately this money will find a loophole mm -hmm. and it will go somewhere else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I know Amos says you have to respect money you have to yes right right um and I say the same thing mm -hmm. you have to respect it for it to respect you back mm -hmm. uh but you also have to give it a name so that you are not feeling like um you're in liquidity mm -hmm. where else if that money now goes you're left blank mm -hmm. you're actually now left in your own vacuum mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another question for you drawn from the Twitter streets um this again was someone who was um again in this past weekend when when everything sort of flared up mm -hmm. someone who was trying to make a difference and differentiate between i think they were calling it entertainment and financial advice mm -hmm. and i think there are also people who were saying you know you shouldn't you shouldn't um um take financial advice from an influencer or you know you know of whatever the case is i want to ask you um as a in investment and financial professional someone who actually has credit and um uh, what's it called validity and it's work that you actually do mm -hmm. do you think because money is such an important component in our society and in our everyday life mm -hmm. and i mean people get fleeced right left and center um um so do you think that it should be being you know giving financial advice should be governed in the same way as other professional um careers you know for example like doctors lawyers i mean you don't you don't just go and get medical advice from you know you know the next the next person on the street talking about x and x and you don't do the same about um getting legal advice or mm -hmm. engineering advice mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you know architectural advice you know you just don't go pick it up from a magazine you're like oh yeah this is great mm -hmm. um but so a man was asking is from a, from a as a financial professional do you feel like um yeah like you guys should be governed and for someone to be able to give financial advice they ought to have some sort of accreditation um um yeah or is it you know if you choose to listen to a charlatan then you know that's your problem you actually should um and at the capital markets authority you yeah. should have 
a license for even um, financial ad being a financial advisor yeah. and there are courses that you need to do yeah. uh, for you to get certification to do to be that yeah um, the thing is you see that disclaimer that you put out yeah yeah I think that is what people should take into account very and not on a light note mm -hmm. yeah the disclaimer of I am not giving financial advisory yeah. do not take it yeah. as financial advisory mm -hmm. that disclaimer should always be there yeah. i think what people do and what maybe influencers do perhaps they take you on their journey for money mm -hmm. and you decide to take it as financial advice mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work out for you what happens mm -hmm. because that was their financial journey mm -hmm. they just decided let me document it mm -hmm. yeah because there's so many people out there who are documenting their financial journey and their relationship with money. So if you decide to take it as financial advice, mm -hmm. and if perhaps themselves they didn't put that disclaimer, yes, because yeah. you always and I, what what we what we are trained to do, fortunately and unfortunately, mm -hmm. we always say I think I think I think, mm -hmm. because it's my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and my journey is my own journey. Yeah. If you take it as financial advice yeah. or if, I, if what I say works out for you, well and good. Yeah. Yes. But if you take it as financial advice and decide to, you know, you can actually be sued. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, even as an, an investment advisor, if yeah. I made a wrong call on an investment co in, yeah. on an, someone's account. <laughs> yeah. I would be sued. I'd be liable for it. Yeah. So yes, we should be governed, and there is actually a certification that people should do. Yeah. Yes, with Capital Markets Authority. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, I hear you. If I'm to try and push back, I mean, I hear you in the, you know, people taking their money journeys and sort of, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. documenting it and and a person perceiving that. I think it's a little bit like um, um, the fire festival um situation the issue with fire mm -hmm. festival which was around mm -hmm. you know marketing and um what communication can do for um a person's understanding or mm -hmm. the person who's viewing and what they understand about what you're trying to say to them mm -hmm. and what you're trying to sell mm -hmm. so yeah maybe there needs to be a little bit of um a little more i don't know yeah yeah mm. and just like you said maybe maybe constant disclaimers around constant um, disclaimers you know, yeah. this is this is not financial advice this yes. is pure yeah. um opinion or whatever the case is exactly okay. so right now mm -hmm. um what are you looking to achieve for you financially what are you trying to achieve in the next um, 5 10 years what does success look like for you in that sense who i want to on a personal note i want to be financially free yeah i want to wake up and i keep saying this i want to wake up on monday and play golf Mm -hmm. And not think about bills. Yeah, um, that should that should start happening soon. Yeah. By the way, yeah. um, I want to know that my children can be able to take care of themselves. Okay. Um, they by the time we are empty nesters, uh, we are. Yeah, you're not taking care of. Yeah someone else's bills you yeah. are traveling the world yeah. with your partner yeah. um that is what i want um for the company i want to empower as many women when it comes to financial literacy as mm -hmm. possible and as many youth um starting with i i love the fact that even my own mother right now has mm -hmm. started asking me what is it in any government bonds that feels mm -hmm. so good? Mm -hmm. And then you have to try and explain to her mm -hmm. um, in a way that she would understand, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I love that um, right now they are more, out of the clients that we have, I think 85% of them are women. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that we have people who decided um, I can only be able to save 50,000 and they have started saving 50,000 and then now they are into they are millionaires. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels good, mm -hmm. and they and they refer other women, and yeah, so it feels good to see that happening. Um, I would want to just see financial literacy taken to another level, mm -hmm. and having our kids start. I always have this dream of having my teenager working in a company um, during the holidays, such that they understand how money. 
flows. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the kind of environment that we have in the US, in the UK, where they, they work, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and pay some bills so yeah, that they can feel yeah, the pain. Yeah. I would want that to happen in Kenya. Yeah. yeah. 75% is, a, 71% of financial, financial literacy. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good dream to have. Yeah, I mm. agree. Mm. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming mm -hmm. to Financially Incorrect. I think, um, yes, you are the second financial professional that we've had on here. Um, so a person who has the credibility to speak to um, and advise and actually <laughs> respond. I think it's been interesting to sort of hear, I guess, mm -hmm. what you think about this space right now mm -hmm. and what it looks like. And I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've enjoyed your insights. Thank you. And yeah. Remember, on the 23rd at, um, I'm trying to see the name, Trademark Hotel, What Women Want. Um, you'll be hosting a panel around yeah. money. I think it'll be a great discussion. It'll be a great place for you guys to come and engage and listen. Yes. And remember, FX Pass is sponsoring that. Remember, everything about trading, um, whether it's the lessons, whether it's opening demo accounts or a full trading account, please check the links in the description box. And we will see you guys on the next episode. And this has been our celebration of women for the month of March. International Women's Day. Yeah, we hope you guys have enjoyed it. Completely. Right. Thank you so much. See ya. See ya.